What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to why Europe is insanely well designed. This video has been popping up on my suggested for the, the longest amount of time, so I eventually caved in and decided to watch it, which is now. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know how, because in the thumbnail it's obviously Europe and then it's the US. So I guess it's comparing the two. And I would always, I always assumed in the modern day, like the US is better designed in terms of like roads and stuff because it's designed for the modern world obviously European cities are a lot older so it's a lot more cramped so I don't understand how it's more like it's better designed but maybe we're going to learn or we will learn how but I guess it's maybe going to go into details as to how cities built like from hundreds and hundreds of years ago are actually designed better for things now I don't really know but we're going to get into this reaction hopefully you're going to enjoy links are in the description to my Instagram my Twitter if those you want to follow me if you want more of these like just these types of reactions I do enjoy them like just designs and just certain weird topics I don't even know what this is it infrastructure maybe I don't know I just enjoy it and yeah I just would be down for more reactions if you want them but yeah let me know in the comments what you want to see and yeah let's just check this out this is a map of Europe's mass transit railway system across okay railway Okay, so he's going into railway to start up. Okay, now that's a different topic, to be fair, countries. from what I've learned. The yellow lines indicate the presence of a train line. And as you can see, it's very dense. There are hardly any spaces where there isn't any coverage for railways. Now, if we compare this to a map of railroad tracks in the US, it's a different story. So is this railway, does this, like, does this show like there's literally no rail at all going through here? So in South Dakota, there's literally no rail at all. Or is it just showing the major rail lines? Because if there's literally none, that is insane. Obviously, South Dakota, I don't know how populated it is. It's one of the least populated um, states. But what the heck? So the most are like here, right? And then there's quite a lot here. It gets quite hectic here. Florida too. There's loads in Florida. But there's just certain spaces where there's literally none. Well, parts Obviously, it's a lot of open space as well. So it does make sense to it like to a certain degree because it would cost so much to get a rail from here to like here or here when it's a few thousand people so it does make sense the but us have some good mass transit there are large areas of the country which isn't covered by amtrak the nation's largest passenger railroad service oh but okay this is just one rail service let me show you another map this time of high-speed rail in europe now obviously, high-speed railways aren't going to be as common as regular speed railways as they require excellent design, strict planning and massive investment. And yet, as we can see, high-speed rail is present in Europe, which is a stark contrast to the US, as you can see from this map. While the US does have some higher speed rail, like the Aquila line in the northeastern corridor, it's hardly an effective map of transport solutions. And the Aquila line isn't really that fast either. It can reach about 150 miles per hour, but averages less than 70. This is not the case for Europe's insanely well-designed railroad system. And you have to remember that Europe's system accomplishes this while spanning 33 different nations in a very diverse continent. And I know what you're probably thinking. This is just because Europe is smaller than the United States, which simply isn't true. While the European Union is smaller than the US, continental Europe has an area that is about 1.04 times as much as the US. So we can dismiss this argument that the United States can't be that well designed because it's too big. Europe simply is better designed. But if you're American, you might not understand why railroad tracks or public transport as a whole is so important. I mean, driving a car works fine, right? Well, no. And Europe showcases why a primary focus on private transportation is so detrimental to a well-functioning transit system. Look at these maps. They show the US road network versus the EU's. And as you can see, the EU's road network is not nearly as impressive as the yeah, US's. This is what and I was yet, thinking when about. you look at some of the most congested cities in the world, European countries don't feature particularly prominently in the global rankings. Bucharest, Romania is there, what? So, let me see, so from Europe, I don't know which of these Moscow's in Europe. It's located in Europe, right? Would this? I mean, obviously it's Russia, so it's in Europe, but also it's not. Saint Petersburg is in Europe. I don't know where Novosibirsk is. I think that's probably in, um, in Asia. Kiev is here. I tell you what, I'm surprised there's not like more Indian or Chinese cities. The fact that Mumbai's fifth and Bengaluru's tenth 
is pretty baffling. Obviously, Istanbul as well, which is in Europe and Asia. In the global rankings. This is pretty shocking information because you'd assume that the country with a more expansive road network has a lot less congestion, especially considering the United States has devoted lots of time and money to their highways. So how come Europe is less congested when they have fewer roads? Well, it all comes down to disincentivizing the use of cars and, most importantly, making an attractive alternative. Europe does this by having both private and public transportation infrastructure, which technically the US has as well, it's just a lot worse. But on top of this, Europe makes it pretty expensive to buy, own and use a car. This is achieved by having high taxes on- Oh, so is the, uh, is the actual like- Ownership, ownership of a car in the US is cheaper because I always thought like, owning a car is a lot which is why I've never really gone into it I was sort of considering it recently just to get my tests done and stuff but it is pricey vehicles and gasoline in fact here's a map of worldwide gasoline prices as you can see European nations are in the top rankings while the US lies at the bottom it's changed recently as well it's even higher but let me be very clear it's only a good idea to make it expensive to drive a car if you have an attractive alternative which America doesn't but Europe does. I mean, obviously this wouldn't work in the US with its current transportation infrastructure, but in Europe, this is a great strategy because you make the roads less congested for those who actually need them and give everyone else an affordable and efficient alternative, being Europe's amazing public transport like the trains on the railways. This is arguably the better strategy because even though the vast majority of Americans have access to vehicles at around 91% and gas is comparatively cheap, it still leaves 9% who don't have access to vehicles. What are these people who can't afford a car supposed yeah. to do? I mean, sometimes Screwed. public transport isn't even an option or simply too expensive for many. So you've now actively excluded those who aren't exactly the most well-off from society. To make matters worse, some US cities actually got rid of their public transport to make room for more cars. I'm not joking. American streetcars like trams were actually removed to make way for bigger roads. Absolutely insane. Compare that to Oslo, Berlin and Madrid, where discussions are underway to restrict or even exclude most cars from the city centre. Yeah, I mean, my city, there's no cars that are allowed in the city centre now. Obviously, there's pedestrianised areas where there's no cars at all, but then there's areas where it's... Well, through the centre of the city, it's just train... the train. Bus links that always go through the city, and I think taxis can go down there as well. Yeah, because obviously you've got to pick people up in the city and stuff. And that's it. That's literally it. And obviously, I guess people drive into the shops and trucks that need to like deliver things. But that's it. And it wasn't like that a good maybe six, seven years ago, eight years ago. So they changed it quite recently. But it's quite good because it's nowhere near as busy as it would be, which is obviously a plus. Forget that when you have cars, you also need somewhere to park them. And this is where things start to become rather ridiculous. You see, the United States has 2 billion parking spaces for 250 million I've seen cars. Something related That's to this one in 8 video. parking spaces. There's so much vehicle. parking spaces. In Europe, it's pretty much up. a one to one with around 250 Not being million used. public parking spaces for 300 million cars. But to oh, emphasize the ridiculousness of this even further, the area that the US dedicates for car parking is actually actually larger than the area dedicated for housing people. It's honestly what? unbelievable that people are being squeezed out of American cities due to regulators wanting to make more room for parking spaces. Wait, this what? simply wouldn't fly in the so EU still because it has a whole policy dedicated spots. to improving urban planning. The See, the EU spent 115 billion euros between 2014 and 2020 to improve city design by making it smarter, greener and more connected simply meaning they allocated funds to make their cities more efficient, more connected, and better for the environment. This looks and better for the environment they really are. As the average resident in a typical western US city, such as Los Angeles or Phoenix, contributes approximately six times more carbon to the atmosphere per capita than an average European city resident. This is purely the result of not having effective transport solutions, which saves resources and allows people to move about efficiently. And exactly that. Moving about efficiently is something most of Europe's citizens are able to do as a result of the European Union. See, most of Europe's nations are in the European Union, which gives the EU citizens a number of perks, which includes a free travel area. This has been one of the most important achievements of the EU, as it makes it possible for an EU citizen to travel freely to other EU member states and stay for up to three months. All they need is a passport or even just an ID card. No visa. And now the UK have messed it up and now it's an absolute pain to travel anywhere because then I'm finally gonna, about to get my passport. I'm now not allowed to travel or now can't travel because the travel restrictions, not restrictions, just 
it's impossible to just to go from a pla- one place to another in the UK because we fucking left the EU like donuts, man. There's so many perks to being in the EU. God damn it. Says no trips to embassies, no form filing, just head straight over. This makes it incredibly easy to travel, study, and work in other countries and communities. And having this level of centralization is very important to good design, as it gives the smartest people the opportunity to work where they are most useful. And since good design obviously requires a lot of complicated problem solving and planning, this is very smart. Another smart thing is the incredible biking infrastructure we see in Europe, perfectly illustrated by this map of bike path density in yeah, Europe. Yeah, the UK the ain't got the same, man. Or bike I'm jealous of the Netherlands and like other countries like that because the UK ain't got anything like this at all. Like, there's literally no purple in my city at all, man. Parts, and there's clearly a lot of them, especially towards the left side of the map. But that's just because this is the home of the Dutch, the Netherlands. Now, the funny thing is, I won't be able to compare this to a map of bike path density in the United States because such a map hasn't been made. At least I wasn't Aww. able to find any, and I can only wonder why. But anyway. What Europe and also the European Union has achieved is pretty remarkable, as it's hard to think of another set of such diverse countries where you would be able to travel so freely, in an efficient and inexpensive manner. I mean, you can literally get from Paris to Amsterdam, for example, in just three hours for around $30. Imagine being able to travel all over Asia without any border crossings, checks or visas, and being able to stay for months at a time. That's that cheaper be- than the UK. I think when he says on Europe, the UK isn't involved in a lot of this, I'm gonna be honest. We've obviously got transport links and stuff, but this price is not what I would think from going from my, so I'm like here, London's here, that's not $30. That's definitely more than that. If you if, if you book it on the day or whatever, like yeah, you're not doing that, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure anyway, maybe not. But that's obviously a lot closer as so well. Paris to Amsterdam is a lot further away, that's like double the length. That's like me going from here to, like, Scotland, which would not cost that much at all. That's, like, in the hundreds. $30. Imagine being able to travel all over Asia without any border crossings, checks. I mean, you can literally get from Paris to Amsterdam, for example, in just three hours for around $30. Imagine being able to travel all over Asia without any border crossings, checks, or visas, and being able to stay for months at a time. That would be truly amazing. And let's not forget that European design has always been distinctive and very successful. In fact, the continent's history of design and interconnectedness serves as a model for the rest of the world. But even though Europe and the EU are pretty great and have amazing infrastructure, they obviously aren't perfect. And I'd love to hear some of the reasons it might not be, so leave a comment down below if you have some thoughts on this. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you. I enjoyed this. Um, obviously, both things have their perks. Like being able to drive, obviously, there's obviously perks there, and like the ability to drive from one place to another. It's obviously a lot of perks to that. There's perks both sides, I, I, I think. But yeah, it's interesting to see because I guess, like you said about alienate, alienating a certain sort of part of the society who don't have much money, they can't travel. And I mean, yeah, it's just interesting to see. I was born and raised in the UK but moved to the USA at 22. I never felt more isolated. In England, I could easily look up bus timetables, which won't turn up on time a lot of the time, but we moved now. To be fair, they're actually not that bad. I can't complain that much. Many of which would take me exactly where I needed to go, use the bike lanes or cycle tracks to go to the town centre or take a train for the day to the next city over. It would be quick and cheap. Here in the USA, I had, I felt I had to have a car and learn to drive it's near impossible to function in society without one and it's terribly sad edit for context my town in the uk has less than forty thousand people and is about an hour and a half away by car from any large city and we still have good yeah there's good to be fair there's a good transport just even in the smallest towns which is yeah like obviously the uk is a lot smaller so it's a lot easier to build that sort of stuff and all that kind of all those kind of things but still yeah it's just I don't know it's just interesting to see the differences but yeah let me know your thoughts if you're from the US and maybe you've lived in the in the, the, not the UK in Europe or you've just travelled here or whatever what are your sort of ideas on the differences or what are your thoughts on the differences and vice versa if you're from a European country and you've been to the US how did you find that um, but yeah this is a fun reaction hopefully you enjoyed and until next time like subscribe peace